Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Keyman 14 for iPhone and iPad launch presentation uh, webinar. So my name is Joshua Horton. I am the lead for the iOS platform of Keyman and a couple of others, but today we're worried about the iOS platform. So, there we go. So Keyman 14, as you may be aware, has been recently released. We are finally out of beta. It is now out in the wild and stable. We'll probably still have a few bug fixes, but it's uh, nice and polished, ready to go. We're probably about halfway through the webinars that we have scheduled for this week. Um, if you're interested in any others, please feel free to check out the schedule and link as seen on the slides. Recordings will be available afterward as well. This is, as again, the iPhone and iPad oriented seminar. It will run for about 30 minutes, and I will be sure to leave some time for questions at the end. So just in case you somehow stumbled into this webinar, not aware of what Keyman is, number one, congratulations, I guess. Number two, let's talk about what Keyman is, right? So Keyman is an app that is designed to allow you to install keyboards and dictionaries uh, that work for your language that might not actually be supported by Apple themselves as part of iOS. There are many languages in the world, approximately 7,000. And while we don't support all 7,000 yet, um, Apple doesn't support as many of those as we actually have keyboards ready and available for. So this allows you to be able to type in your language when other solutions just may not have their offerings. We use the same files to be able to support keyboards and dictionaries on iOS as we do on our other platforms like Android, Windows, Mac, Linux, and so these keyboards can often work on all platforms. Um, you can configure the keyboards to work for all applications, and the app itself works as a nice scratch pad for typing a language. And if you're the type that's interested in developing your own keyboard, well, it's great for testing it out and making sure that it works before you try to use it in other applications. But enough on that. Let's talk about what's new with Keyman 14. As has been noted with some of our other platforms, we now have a simpler and smoother keyboard search process that makes it a lot easier in the average case to find the keyboards that you're looking for. We also simplified the process of installing for the target language that you might desire, which definitely helps in us being able to find the dictionaries that may work with your language if we have those. We don't necessarily have a lot of dictionaries published yet, but we're hoping that over time, the community will be able to continue adding new ones. And so we can support autocorrect type features for more and more languages. We have a fully localizable user interface. We've consolidated crash reporting, which should help us to stay more on top of issues before people even think to submit them. And we've done a lot of work for predictive text to make it work a lot nicer and uh, just feel overall more useful than it did before. So about that improved keyword search. If you've been to the other webinars so far, this screen probably looks fairly familiar, just you know maybe not in the iOS device frame, but you can do a search similar to the other platforms within the iOS app. And if we'll have that same list of keyboards weighted by popularity and reference. So here I've gone ahead and entered a little bit of a language name. So it could be for French or it could be for this um, Frisk language. I'm not too familiar with that. So hopefully I didn't butcher its pronunciation too badly. Once that completes and you select a keyboard, you then have that nice green button there to potentially install it. And also of note is that down here, we have a little link for the keyboard help. While it's not particularly highlighted, it is quite useful for being able to preview the keyboard if you have an idea of what you're looking for to make sure that it does match your expectations. Now, rather than leave everything with plain static pictures, why not pull over a simulator and show it off directly? So as before, you go into settings and install languages. Apparently I need to do an update, oops. But if you hit the plus, rather than bring up that giant list of catalog that we used to have, we have the search. Right. So pull up the keyboard. 
you have that same page as seen before. Though I guess this time on a slightly smaller device, so it's a little more compressed than the screenshot on the slides. Note, as it loads, you even see a little progress bar so that you know that is at least trying as opposed to just not working. So if instead of installing the keyboard immediately, I come over here to keyboard help, notice that it launches the help page in a separate browser. I can even resume right where I had been. So I can check out data about this keyboard. When I view the layout, I might get optimized the page a bit, but it is an Azerty layout as opposed to a standard US one, which for many French people, they're probably looking for something like that. Then when satisfied, Hop right back to the app, assuming you're on a uh, 13 or um, iOS 14 device. I'm not sure if it holds the exact same patterns on older iOS devices since they did do a major UI revision since uh, 13. Then when you install and the download completes, we're now into the package installer. So let's hop over to there. Now, before you saw a bit of how it looked on the, the um, iPhone style device, here we have it on a tablet format. Because tablets have more screen real estate, I've actually compressed what would be two screens on a phone device into one in the tablet, making use of that. We always show the README from the package as part of the installation process. So it's shown for both keyboards. And if you're the type that actually is developing a dictionary, you install it directly. We will showcase the dictionary's readme as well. But if it's automatically installed, which would be the case for most users, it's not going to appear then. Now for keyboards or models, if you've got multiple language codes tagged on them, that support multiple languages, you'll have a nice long list or short, depending on how many, but the Cameroon QWERTY keyboard supports a lot of languages, hence this example. And you can select multiples. Now, of course, French Basic supports French. There's not even a need to select language because it only supports the one. So we just kind of shortcut that list out of there entirely for that case. Then when you click Install, we present the help which should look fairly familiar from the uh, web page, although here it actually looks a little better formatted. And I love the Cameroon QWERTY keyboard for this because it has a very robust help page, lots of wonderful detail. Uh, so it's a wonderful screenshot. So again, Whatever you install, the package's documentation will be displayed, assuming that the package creator has provided such pages. If you've selected multiple languages, and especially if some of those languages do have dictionaries associated with them, dictionaries may continue downloading in the background at this stage. You've streamlined it so that it will be in your way as little as possible, Although if you're a bit of a power user and like to fly, uh, fly very quickly through install screens, you may find yourself getting caught here as everything completes in the background because we don't want there to be issues with loading the dictionary too late when you go to load up the keyboard for the first time. Another little feature I actually neglected to include in the slides. So I'll bring this over here real quickly. So once you've downloaded packages, we actually always maintain a copy of that package file for you on your device. So Keyman has an area within, that's accessible through the Files app, as long as you're on a modern enough iOS device, which I believe is iOS 11 when they first started making this available to us. So right here, the basic French keyboard package is the one that I just demonstrated. So you're able to go in and reinstall it later at your leisure if you need to without using any internet um, connectivity. So no, no issues with data. Also, because that file is locally stored and you can use the same one on literally every device, 
you could copy that from your phone, download it, or just transfer it over to your computer and install it that way, or email it to somebody else. So it's one avenue for file sharing. We also support QR codes like with many of our other platforms. As this has been one of our big pushes, the app is now fully localizable. We have French, German, and Khmer localizations already supported, as you can see with two of these screenshots. Um, and you can contribute at translate.keyman.com to help uh, see your language supported as well. If you wish to enable this, this currently relies upon your system language settings with an iOS. So if you go into the settings app under general language and region, I believe is the hierarchy through the menus. It then takes a look at your preferred language order. Now iPhones only are localized on the system level in a select number of languages, but they do allow for some additional languages. For example, Kamai does not have iPhone UI strings available. It has not been localized for Kamai. But if an app is localizing Kamai, they do allow that. So if I were to move Kamai above English, I would get that screenshot on the previous slide where Kamai was used within the app. So the top most supported language in your preferred language order as seen here is what will be used for your app strings for all the text. We have also um, made the big error reporting push to facilitate getting feedback so we can recognize when things are going wrong within the app or within the keyboard when used elsewhere. We do require that this be enabled manually because of how iOS operates. We require special permissions in order to be able to actually get error feedback from the keyboard when used outside of the application. And so you'll have to not only hit this toggle here, but also, so, right, I should hit the toggle, except unfortunately this version of the simulator when targeting this device doesn't let me hit the toggles. Apologies on that front, but system keyboard settings, it will automatically load up keyman sections within the settings. Keyboards allow full access is right here. So you'd be able to go in, click the toggle, it will prompt and let you know. So if you're fine with what it's um, with the warning, allow, and then you can return to the app and your reporting will be enabled. Now, one of um, my favorite points to talk about, because this is one of my other lead pushes, is all the wonderful improvements we have made to predictive text. Before, we were fairly limited in where corrections could actually occur within the word, but we've now done a lot of work to facilitate finding typos or at whatever stage in the word they may appear. So here, we've got, uh, based on this misspelled word, well, maybe we forgot an S for the actual proper spelling of misspelled. Or perhaps we were a little bit off and shouldn't have had that E in there. And, you know, we just misplaced some of our keystrokes. Either one could be a viable interpretation of the text that we see there. We prefer to correct for fat finger scenarios if it turns out you might have just been a little bit inaccurate with the key press, but sometimes if you're perfectly accurate with the key press, you just kind of messed up on the spelling outright. We want to keep in mind all possible sources of the spellings and be able to adapt accordingly. As with previous versions of Keyman, corrections will consider the layout of the active keyboard. If you're using a QWERTY keyboard or an ASERTY keyboard, it will adjust accordingly if you're using the A or the Q key to what is neighboring that key on that keyboard, which may differ between those layouts. And just as a couple of examples of some non-Latin script languages that do have predictive text supported. So I've highlighted where some corrections are being made here. So for the one on the right, 
you'll notice all the suggestions have the same lead character, but the, the first suggestion and the other two suggestions differ by the second character. And that's because these two keys are neighboring. Now, I don't know the language, so I can't really speak to how um, frequently these words appear in this particular language, but I'm assuming it must be significantly enough that they have shown up like this. And if you break out a microscope and look really closely in here, the first character is where the difference was made. Apparently, this key is not usually the start of a word, or it may just be for unlikely words. And it's really a lot better if the character on the right is used for the start of words based on the suggestions that we see here. Again, I am not an expert in that language. So I'll, I do trust that this is working as the language designer intended, or the model dictionary designer intended. Sorry. Dictionaries may now preserve capitalization as typed. Existing dictionaries will require some updates to support this, although they are fairly simple updates. We just don't wish to accidentally cause a language to have capitalization that does not want it, because that's honestly even more of a problem. Because if their language doesn't normally have capitalization, what are these completely different letters I'm now looking at? Works with proper noun style capitalization as we recognize it in English or you know, sentence initial if you wish to think of it in that format and also all caps input. And we do allow for some customization on exactly what that proper noun capitalization means for the designers of the dictionary, but that is a topic best left toward the Let's Go Model Development webinar, which will be happening tomorrow. It's definitely far out of scope for this presentation. So just as an example, having the same text, just with different capitalization, you can see how the suggestions are adjusted here. If just the first letter is capitalized, it looks like a good proper noun or sentence initial capitalization. If all caps, well, since you've been typing in full caps so far, might as well keep it above the pattern. Also, we have finally been able to make a bit of an adjustment to how the banner on the system keyboard layer acts, where before we always showed that image banner under the pop-up keys because we were limited to space inside of the keyboard. We've now made some adjustments so that we're able to still, it still has to show within the keyboard space, but we've made sure that the keys will display in an accurate location, even for that top layer, where before we kind of had to reserve that space to make sure, make sure that it would display properly. This may affect your use of pop-up keys, um, as seen here on the left. It does tend to hide the top layer whenever you're using a pop-up key from the top layer, so it's kind of hard to see what's behind see what's behind that, if that's something that is important to you. So you may choose to keep the banner in place, but if you would rather just have larger keys, go for it. That is an option now available to you. For one last note, we are strongly considering increasing the minimum required version for iOS to 12.0 in the next release. That should cover all devices released in the last five years. Apple does seem to like rotating and stopping to support at about that layer. Um, that level. And it turns out that there are a fair number of uh, um, decisions we have to make in our coding that have been dependent on the iOS version being before or after 11. And it turns out that any device that supports 11 supports 12. So we're thinking of targeting in that direction to be able to make our code base a little bit easier to maintain and have some less issues moving forward. And at this point, we are perfectly um, fine to accept questions. Thank you for listening so far.